Hello and welcome. My name is Tyrion Lannister. All right, so here's what I'm going to do today. I want to talk about some of the new changes that were made to the ultimate battle, or glorious battle, sorry. Uh, and I also want to go through some of the kind of ways that you can participate in this event through, you know, just do, doing the basic logistics things and what is kind of best at different times for your uh, for your whole city and for your whole faction. Okay, so for starters, um, changes. Nothing major to the map was changed as far as the design and layout. Uh, there's still eight different factions, and there's still most things are in the exact same place they were before. But there is a big change as far as when things are unlocked. So if you go to the world progression stage, after the piece is disrupted, you can do the unlock. Now, after ample airment is unlocked, which is going to be in just a couple hours for us, you can declare a war against the warehouse region. Now, the warehouse region represents your gate and then all of the different buffs you can get. So that's these two, all these buffs, these two, and then all the buffs. But this fortress for each of us, the top fortress, as I like to call it, is not available until the skewed three powers is done. Um, now, if you look at the world, this there's no skewed three powers. I believe this is actually a hangover from the previous glorious battle, and they just mean the power unbalance stage. As you can see here, you can declare war against more neutral cities, and I believe this is what they're referring to. Now, once that stage is completed, you still can't attack the middle ones. Those are still waiting for the treacherous bat battlefield to be done, which is still right here, um, still towards the end that you can do the all cities and you can attack the center city. Um, but that's the main big change, and it's important to realize that you're not going to be able to just rush for a large military. Again, that's not available until later. You need to go after the buff castles first. And I think this is going to create a lot more PvP play because it means that people are going to have to fight over this fortress. There's nothing else to fight over. You're literally not able to go anywhere else. So I'm really anticipating that being kind of a fun, interesting change that's going to have more PvP earlier on, but it also means that the only people you can fight are the people right next to you. Okay, so that's the basic change with the map. What else has changed? Well, there's a really big change to the reward system. So as you can see, you've always been able to get rewards based on doing different contributions. The more contributions you get, the more rewards you get, and they're really good. I mean, you're getting the uh, Glory Raffle tokens, which you can you know use the wheel on. You can also get 60S tokens at periodic times, which is great. Um, you can get 300 Blessing Stones, which is good. And then you can also get things like more Marching Bugles, as well as more glory points um, that you're able to spend on improving yourself in the game. Now, they've also included this Eliminations Rush, though. And what this does is it allows you to get Darius Medals in addition to all the rest, um, which is huge. I mean, Darius Medals are really hard to come by, and this means that you don't have to spin the wheel to get them. You know you're getting them for getting this many Elimination Points. If you go all the way down to the very bottom, this last Darius Medal represents getting a total of 10 Darius Medals in this event. So this way, if you get a full, um, I believe it's 10 million elimination points, that would be the equivalent to getting 10 Darius Medals that you will achieve through here. You'll also get a bunch of extra marching bugles and a good number of extra glory points. Um, these glory points, I don't believe, count to your daily total of either 400 or 600 if you have the honor uh, badge. So this is really helpful for you there. Now. There may be a lot of you that are just totally confused by this event, have no idea what's going on. So I want to also take a moment to talk about that from your end. So when you look at this event, I think the most important thing to understand is what is my role? So as you can see, there's offensive, defensive, and logistic. If you're going to be getting elimination points, if you want those Darius medals, be an offensive or defensive once the fighting starts. But for a lot of us, being in the logistic role is going to be much better. Now, it's important to realize that you can obtain points through any of the three roles, so you can still send the minimum 10,000 troops whenever there's an attack on a neutral city or an attack against a, a PvP opponent, and you can still get the 100 basic uh, contribution points from doing that, even if you're in a logistics role. Um, you can still get those that 100 points towards the administration and towards the limit that you get, as well as the rewards you get here for getting more individual points and the rankings at the end on individual contributions, you still get all of those. But you can also obtain a lot more points through either trading or transporting. Now, how do you trade? Well, there are three different ways you can trade. 
Um, at the, sorry, at this stage in the game, there are three ways you can trade. Um, I can trade through this medium merchant. I can trade here. I can trade through this small merchant here, or I could trade through my city. Now, as you can see right now, when I click on the medium merchant, I have these five options, defensive, transport, trade, construct, and view. Um, viewing it just means I can see it. As you can see, um, there's some basic stats for it. I know how many resources we have in it. Uh, we have way too many for the record. But um, the important thing for us right now is trade. If I click on trade, I can see that there are five more shops open. We can do a total of 157. It'll take eight hours. There's a base efficiency of 12,000 uh, resources per hour. I get a 40% bonus. Um, this is because I'm the position I'm in is 30% um, extra. And then also because uh, we get 10% bonus from having the caravan right now. So I'm getting a little bit bonus when I trade right now. Um, the 30% sorry is coming from being a logistics position. So my total gains would be 134,400. That would go right here to my total faction supplies. We have 30 million right now. Uh, we would get an additional uh, 134,400 for doing that. Now, what would I get? Well, 134,400, you would have to divide it based on how many points you get for it. So you can see here that every 4,000 airmen supplies obtained through trade, that's the fourth one down, that's the one that we're looking at, 4,000 airmen supplies obtained through trade, that means we're going to be getting around a little over 30 or so um, in doing uh, this particular trade, 134,000 divided by 4,000, a little bit over 30. So that is what I would get um, for trading right now. I would get 30 total points for one marching bugle. Now, let's compare that to if I was to do construction. So if I go to construction right now, I have a couple of different constructions I can do. I'll go ahead and do one for us. I'm going to do this, medium military, getting more marching bugles. Those are always good. How much do I get from a marching bugle? Well, I get exactly on the third one down, each construction quest completed, I get 25. So that's one way that I can get a little bit more is if I do the trading through the medium uh, merchant, I get 30 uh, as opposed to just 25. So it's better to do trading through the merchant. Now, uh, what else can I get it from? Well, there's also, as I said before, I could trade through the small merchant or I could trade through my base. Now, as you can see, if you trade through the small merchant, um, there are also 80 shops there. They're already full, though. You know, I can't do any more trading here if I wanted. Um, they're insufficient shops. So I wouldn't be able to trade here if I even wanted to. But if I go to my, my like, you know, main city, there is no limit on how many people can trade here. So if I wanted to trade right now, I definitely could. Um, I'm not going to because, as you can see, my efficiency is a lot lower. The base efficiency here is 6,000 as opposed to here. It was 12,000. I'm getting half as many resources back, only 67,000. So this is going to be not quite worth it. I'm not going to get as much back um, for my marching bugle or for my faction. That being said, if this was an alt account, if this was a farm or a hof or anything else, I should be doing this because it doesn't matter for those accounts. They don't really need all the individual rewards or anything else, and it frees up the open slots on the bigger merchants. Oh, see, it's full now, by the way. It already filled up um, or on this one. Let's see if this one's full. Okay, this one also is full. So by allowing other people to do that, then you can let those main accounts fill up the good ones, and then your alts can just fill up. Uh, you know, There's no filling up. You can just do it as many times as you want on this uh, main city. As you can see, we have about a thousand people in logistics right now that should be hopefully doing that. Ideally, if all of them are doing that, that is great. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is transporting. I truly believe that you should be very careful about transporting. As you can see, if I transported right now, and this is already with me doing a little bit of my uh, administration in this direction, I've got two done on the limit. Here, I can actually do one more. I've got three done on the limit now. I've got three uh, extra in my speed. Um, as we can see, if I were to transport here, uh, I would be getting 19 contribution points. That is, again, less than if I did a construction task. It is less than if I was trading through the medium military and about the same as I would get through trading through the small merchant. So I said medium, medium merchant or the small merchant, both better than transporting. Now, the advantage of transporting is that it's quickly, right? You can ideally do it. If I look here, uh, I would transport in about two minutes. So it's much quicker for sure than the others. And that, that's why a lot of people like to do it. Now, here is my advice to all of you. Most people want to make sure that they always get their max here of, you know, if you have honor 
badge, you can get up to 600 every day. If you don't, you can only get up to 400. But people want to max this out. And I, of course, understand that. You want to get more glory points so you can improve. You want more individual points um, so you can get better rewards. Totally understand it. My recommendation to everyone is to save up your marching bugles and to use them on construction. Um, that is a much better way. You get a lot more points from it. It is better for your whole faction to be doing that, um, and it, it isn't wasting resources in the same way. As you can see right now, we have 48,000 resources in that medium merchant. We have 6,000 in this medium military, 13 here, uh, 42 here, and 14 here, and 13 here. The, the 42 that we have and 48 here are just really wasteful. I, I really don't, I wish we didn't have that much. Um, I can't see the, I think I can view these constructions. I mean, we're going to ideally finish the, uh, the trading shops, increasing the shops and increasing the efficiency. But um, other than that, we really do not need these other ones. They're just for defense. And ideally this castle or this uh, city should not be getting attacked. Um, that'd be very bad for us if it is. But uh, there's just not a lot of advantage that comes from it, so it's really wasteful to be sending a lot of resources there. The better place to send the resources is the medium militaries, um, if you're going to, just because if you look at these constructions, um, these are really important. We're going to want to do these every day um, and try to get them up as quickly as possible. That's what we're working on right now, and ideally we'll get that up to 10 as quickly as we possibly can. Looks like we're working on the third for each of them, um, but we only have 6,000 resources here and 13 here so we need more there and less in these medium military merchant or medium merchants sorry but the most important thing with, with transporting resources is to save up your supplies so that once you get a fortress you can send it to the fortress this is the best way to be able to win in pvp because once you have resources in a fortress you can send from that fortress. Most, most factions are going to only allow their big mega whales to send from those fortresses because it means that only those big whales can quickly send. They'll have a higher uh, resilience, they'll be better at fighting, and that's the best thing that you as a logistics member can do is to support those whales, give them all the resources they can to continually spam it from the fortress, and that is what's going to make you most successful. So I hope this was helpful in reviewing some of the changes that have been made to Glorious Battle, as well as what you should be doing if you're kind of confused by the whole event and what, what's going on with it. So I hope this helped, hope you learned a thing or two, and until next time, my name is Tyrion Lannister. I'll see you then.